Hey yo. And gentlemen, welcome to Two Clicks from KO. As always, I am the Beavis to his butthead. I am Aries Edge. And with me, as always, the one, the OG, the host, Aaron Cantu. <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, Beavis. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? As you can hear, much smoother sounding. Primo. Nice. The microphone is in. The microphone is working. Yeah. Thank you for all the feedback. Uh, you're going to get a better quality uh, of sound now through us. And hey, it looks like you're also going to get some video, too. Oh, what do you know? Yeah. Uh, thought we'd try something new. Try and uh, shout out to Chase from the Majestics. HeroClix uh, podcast. He kind of clued me in on a little uh, video recording and stuff. So we're going to try that out this week. Uh, worst case scenario, we don't have video, but we still have our podcast. <laughs> so worst case scenario, you still have the audio. If the video yeah. uh, ends up crap in the bed, then ah, we still have the audio. So there we go. Yeah. There you go. All right, so today we're going to talk about... So last week we talked about uh, the previews for EarthX. We had three days worth of previews. Mm-hmm. Three, yeah, three. Yep, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so we got Thursday, Friday to talk about. And then we had previews from Lucky Dice Games. Yep. Shout out to Lucky, Lucky Dice. And uh, there was uh, rock events this weekend. Uh Saw a few teams, so what, Big Bang posted their top, was it top four or whatever? Top four, I think it was. They had a qualifier. And then, uh, oh, shit. where did Ricky play? Uh, uh, was right. he in Pennsylvania? Something like that, I don't know. He had a 19-player win a map that he won, Ricky Kirk. So uh, I got his team. It was a Rock Age Limited format. So that'll be fun. We'll talk about that. The, the, the Geekery headquarters, man, they ran <coughs> a winner map over there in Astoria, uh, New York, and they had a bomb-ass format. 400 Ooh. points. Um, Let's get into I, that. Let's I, believe it was, I believe it was modern. I want to say it was modern. But they did 200 and 200. You had to have 200 points from Marvel. You had to have 200 points from DC. And they had to be theme teams. So... If you had 200 points of an Avengers theme team and you had 200 points of, like, say, like a Gotham City Underworld, it would be considered a named theme team for the 400 points. You could do a universal generic theme team. It would just be a generic theme team. Mm-hmm. So thinking outside the box, I, I like stuff like that. I think it was, like, um, super limited, to. I think you could use Retaliators. But when you use the retaliators, they got dealt one unavoidable damage at the end of the turn, and they died off. So you really paid to play those retaliators. Uh, yeah. And I think there was no sideboard either. So it was basically 400 points on the board. Let's see what you got. I believe Chance, I'm going to butcher his last name, Chance Drewiski. I don't know. I think it's like Drzinski or something. Drzinski, I think. Chance is the one who won. Uh, he edged out a uh, team pushing member. Uh, he, Jason Kayum, 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 like the, I don't know. I can't Kum. pronounce his last name. Kayum, Kum, Kum, Kum. Nah, no, we're going Kayum, like the hot dogs. Okay, that's uh, what we're doing. Kayokan, Jason Kayokan. Um, so how many? Do you know how many players were there? Uh, I believe they had eight players for the winner map. Eight players for the winner map. So it's like, I mean, that's cool. That's a. That's like an average local turnout, right? Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. If, I, if you're charging cool. ten dollars a person, the, I think the kits are fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. You're making your money back, and then some to keep yeah. the lights on. Um, what a maps are coming out hot, man! Nineteen person, yeah. what a map! Eight person, what a map! Like, decent, decent yeah. for the kit. Yeah, no, I think that's cool. Um, I was gonna say like it as, in regards to that format, like it's cool. Um, because you still get like I'm gonna just take these off. Uh, you still get like the um, golden age, or you still get like your local play type stuff, and then um, it's kind of like, but it's a competitive thing. You get like competitive pricing, so uh, you know it's okay. Like that's a funky format to be competitive. That's just the way I feel. So like 
if I'm traveling, if like I want to travel an hour to go play or two to go play in the winter map, it's like that's kind of a weird format, you know. And then you got to deal with all the local um, sort of like I don't know etiquette, I guess. Yeah. So that could, that could be kind of weird, but I mean that's cool. I mean eight I, players is. I mean, but it's still fun. like. I, would I travel that far for a qualifier? Probably not with that kind of a format. But for a win a map, yeah. I would dust off some stuff. I would try and throw something together that's fun and uh and perform. Like See, yeah. I would I would almost travel that far for like a qualifier before a win a map because the qualifier is at least gonna have what, like four or eight maps versus uh, one that's one. I think it's four for the qualifier, maybe. <laughs> but again though, like I don't wanna like I don't know. I just I feel like I would probably, I would probably put the time in for a win a map just to be because, yeah. I mean, if you're trying to be super competitive, like, I would hate to go to a qualifier and really want to like play and like have it be like, I lose on like some some BS technicality for right for some goofy combo that I'm not going to like foresee coming up on me, so. Yeah, but like like I said, it's just kind of weird. Like um, like Ricky's was uh, Rock Age Limited. Um, Ooh. right so like that's a pretty established format um you can find the list of things you can mm-hmm. and can't play um you know so like that's cool it's like i said it's pretty established it's well known and uh he had there was 19 players i forget where it was um but uh, let's see so i know he like th- there's quality there too because i think patricia uh lamb played yeah and, uh, and a few other guys. So, Ricky, Ricky told me he played uh, uh, Witch Queen Le Fay. Oh, Zatanna Clarion and a suited henchman. Which Zatanna? The B Taz. Okay. Because uh, I, I was thinking, like, all right, which Zatanna is it? The Harley Quinn or is it the? the yeah, make. I'm I'm assuming um, seventy five points because uh, she was making bats. So. Yeah, and, and so 150, 225, 295, 300. Yeah, so because the henchman's five or whatever, right? Yeah, suited henchman. Uh, Love suited yeah, henchman. it says there were two Green Arrow Gotham teams, uh, one man army unit mind, two X Factor teams. X Factor, uh, really? Yeah, a Balls of Fury team and a double Big Boss Hill team in the top eight. He says it's kind of all over the place, but most of those teams had two plus losses. Um, so it wasn't 19 players. I think it's five rounds you have to run, four or five rounds. I think it's five, five <laughs> plus. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, yeah, he's, he's pretty diverse. That's a pretty diverse. Yeah, other than the double. Uh, other than, yeah, Gotham with Green Arrow and Unimind. Uh, yeah. But like seeing like Witch Queen and seeing Big Boss Hill, X Factor instead of X Men, uh, yeah, yeah. good to see. Good to see. I think X Factor. You turn your volume down just a little bit. I'm a little high. I think I can hear an echo. I may hear an echo. How about now? Am I good? I don't know. Let me talk. Yeah, I don't hear myself now. Can Word. you hear me? All right, cool. I can hear you. Sorry, guys. Um... <laughs> the new, new mic. We're working stuff out still. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Box of uh, hair would fall over next to me. That's all right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you have to like X Factor. I think is like Deadpool and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I I think Witch Queen. He talks about how Witch Queen is a good counter to Green Arrow. Um, because you know Green mm-hmm. Arrow relies on the range combat expert. Mm-hmm. And, you know, plus plus stuff to whatever you know, um, freaking uh, attack or damage, whatever you want to do. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, Witch Queen says, no, you don't get modifiers. And also, you know, you don't get to, uh, you know, I'm just going to mastermind your way. That's what the henchman's there for, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, again, I, I still think people are sleeping on, on Witch Queen. I think uh, maybe not right now. Maybe it's not like the greatest play right now, but maybe... <sighs> After rotation, we've maybe knocked a few things out of there that people are using. Uh, I think her stock rises. And then once we see some of these objects uh, more and more, I think some of these objects are going to also play a big factor into 
maybe yeah. uh, sparking some new stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so what what do you think so far? Uh, oh, we also Big Bang had their qualifier. Yep, congratulations, Sam Powell. Sam Powell won the qualifier. Uh, uh, what, she was playing Unimai and Lockjaw. I think she was uh, running a Unimai team. Standard, standard like a uh, suite of cosmic stuff. Um, Fifteen the, players. I think they had. Yeah, fifth, something like that. <clears throat> it's pretty good. What happened? What are you What are you doing over here? I'm here, bro. <laughs> I, my dog is stepping on stuff. I'm just making sure she's not oh, stepping okay. on expensive stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. It'd be like my dog. My dog would just eat it. Oh, yeah. that's what, nah. They're they're good about that. But no, nah, it's uh, we're still kind of in that like after worlds hangover. Everyone's yeah. just starting to slowly get back into it. We have those March Wiz Kids Opens coming up. So I think once the March Wiz Kids Opens pop off, and uh, I think we I think we start to slide <laughs> right back into uh, a lot of. Uh, from what I've heard too is that there are a lot of winter maps out there. A lot of people are buying kits, and yeah. you're gonna see a lot of uh, of competitive uh, play coming soon. Yeah, I hear it's like they're flying off the shelves. I know I got one. I got one on the way here for January twenty sixth for my. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try and get one and do a uh, a sealed EarthX winter map in my okay. place down here in Sarges. Sealed winter map. Oh boy. It's gonna. I mean, my guys. They like to play sealed. They enjoy <laughs> no, uh, cool. getting their hands on that new. I mean, the way that they look at it is. They get to buy two boosters. They're already winning if they pull something good, and they have fun playing in sealed. So yeah. if it's gonna bring people to the store to play, I'll do sealed all day long. Yeah. I don't mind sealed. I enjoy sealed myself. Oh, docs, uh, docs, something was it? Docs Qu- comics or something? And Texas had a qualifier, I think. Right? Yes, Jeff Farrow won. Shout. Uh, to Jeff yeah. Farrell. Jeff, Jeff Farrell won that. Um, yep, I forgot about that. <laughs> Just looking at the uh, the picture of the top eight, I was like, wait, are those two guys kissing? <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this is too much. Check this out. <laughs> They're close. They're I close. know, it's, it's, a, it's a gag thing, right? But it's still oh, absolutely. And, there's my guy Micah. There's my guy Micah. You got Jeff over here. And hell with Micah. He doesn't know how to put gas in the car. It's his last road trip he's having. Oh, yeah. That's like done. rule one. Rule one of learning of like borrowing your grandma's car. Put yeah, some they... gas back in that, bro. What are you doing, Micah? Left there on empty. This wasn't like just like this was buried empty. Like I have to go down to the gas station and bring yeah. gas back to the house. Like empty. Yeah. He left it like in the dirt bag empty. Well, the good news is he's like 15, so his legs are good for walking. You can take his ass over he's there. He's a little older than 15. <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> he's sub 18, so he's good for he's good for a long walk. I don't know. That could be like uh, like sex trafficking material too, though. Could be and all bad. And here, here we go. There we go. Almost we're... almost made it. You know, 15 minutes. Seven minutes in. 13, 13 minutes. Jesus. I almost made it. All right. That's a good segue into some previews. <laughs> let's get right into the previews. <laughs> let's get into the previews. Let's, let's talk previews. Where do you want to start? Want to start with uh, Lucky Dice? Let's do the Lucky Dice because that those are the hot ones that just came out. We had uh, three decent ones. I'm super, super stoked about that's the girl right there. That's the one I'm Lady, so stoked about. Lady Octopus. Lady Octopus. I mean... 50 points. You're already starting off with charge. You got some super strength. You got energy shield deflection. You got shape change. Um, mm-hmm. What does she got? Four range. I don't. I'm not, I don't mind that. Um, and then of course it's got the the generic. You know she can go ahead and um, start the game equipped with the octopus arms. Now right. the signature equipment trait is what it is. And now of course <coughs> people were more excited to actually just hear about what the possibility of the octopus arms are what i threw out there was because we've seen them in threes 
And what it's usually been is you get flight, you get something, and you get something else. I think the glider was you get flight, you get running shot. If you can already use running shot, you're getting hypersonic speed. With the old the old uh, butt pod, as people are calling it. Yep. You got what? You got flight, you got toughness, and you got a plus two to your movement. Yes. So if we're following suit, I think you're probably going to get toughness just because you see that whole dial of energy shield deflection. That's very uncharacteristic of like an octopus, Dr. Octopus dial. So I'm going to say probably you're going to gain toughness from the uh, octopus arms. Probably going to gain flurry. And then I think you're going to gain some sort of giant reach uh, just because of how the arms look to work. So if I had to guess, it'd probably be like giant reach to flurry and toughness with the octopus arms. What do you think? So if I had to guess, and I would say it's probably flurry. I mean, that's a pretty obvious yeah. uh, thing. Flurry, uh, I would say some sort of improved movement. Like elevated and hindering, maybe. Mm. And then, um, like I, I don't think you just give flight. Like I don't think, like, no, that's like, you, like, I don't think you get flight to her. No, but but I definitely think you get like improved movement, elevated, or and hindering, unless you just wanted to do like leap climb, which is kind of lame, but no. makes sense. Um, leap climb such a bad power, but anyway. it's horrible. It's that's, that's a, one of the things that needs to get fixed yeah but that's so, a whole different episode that's a whole different thing um so like because like the thing with doc ock is typically like he's got this he scales the walls and you mm-hmm. know, things like that you know so those two i think make a lot of sense you could do like toughness uh or you could do like maybe like combat reflexes a giant reach also makes sense so yeah. like so like what if it was like flurry giant reach and improved movement elevated what would you think about maybe if they just gave you uh, the giant symbol? It would give you all those improved movements and stuff and would give you the giant reach as well. That'd be pretty good. And you could carry, right? Exactly. Like, so, like, give you giant size. Or what size, if you did, like, Passenger toughness? 2? Maybe. What if it was, like, Passenger 2? Like, so you get giant size, uh, flurry, and Passenger 2, right? Because, like, you got, you got your two tentacles, you know, and, and then... Uh, you got where like what you call it you know like you you're running around like doing the i got two dudes in the back that probably looked really bad but the only, <laughs> the, like, like i said the only thing that i would think about toughness is just for the fact that there is no damage reducers on the dial uh-huh. which is very uncharacteristic for like a dr octopus type dial the energy shield i understand that but like i think i think the, the arms are gonna give toughness or or some sort of a reducer the flurry yeah. is just just a given, and then the third potential thing is kind of up in the air. Yeah, the third thing, the th- you know, could be, it could be anything really. I mean, I think the one thing we know for sure is, is it's going to be flurry. Flurry is a is a given. You have to figure with anything, Doctor Octopus, it's got to be flurry. Yeah. So the next preview we have is uh, the rose. Which, ah. I, what? Ah. Uh, I like this piece. I like this piece a lot. So he's a uh, Magia Hydra spy. He's kind of like a, uh, the other uh, crime bosses dudes, you know, that we've had. He's got the leadership that makes the hired flunkies. But this guy's got, um, so he's got leadership mastermind traded. He can make four hired flunkies. Yeah, uh, he's, got, he's got traded shape change. And when he uses it and succeeds, give him a mystery token. He's got free, remove a mystery token. This turn, friendly characters named Hired Flunky have free move. So, and then he's stealth, combat reflexes, prob, underworld for 40 points. I mean, he's pretty, he's pretty boss for 40 points. I mean, you got to get in close to hit him unless you're busting through stealth. So you got to hit a 19. The prob is good. Uh-huh. Um... He'll be good on Hydra teams. Magia, I mean, they still need to have a little more oomph in that keyword for it to be viable. Spy is also another generic keyword that people so, don't say a whole lot. So Magia's got all the enforcers also. Like, all the enforcers are also Magia. Yes. 
So, so I mean, but he doesn't have the enforcer's keyword. So to get like Fancy Dan's little trick, he wouldn't be yeah. able to because he doesn't have the enforcer's keyword. Yeah. So, uh, I think he's good for what he does, and it's a Will. Was it uh, Richard Fisk? People were excited that they get to upgrade their Richard Fisk. Yeah. Uh, again, also uh, generating higher flunkies that can carry each other around the board because they have the underworld. Um, and then they got the free thing too, so they can like um, yeah. free, free, and then move uh, carrying, and then the other one can free move carry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. You can kind of daisy chain it across the map, mm-hmm. get him up into place. Or you can just, you know, it's like a little baby charge for a hired flunky. Yeah. If you, if you got enough, you can, like, move them, and then they can use, like, their exploit weaknesses. And then, uh, you know, they got only a nine attack. Maybe you drop in a, a trouble alert. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. They're good trouble alert. Uh, definitely some good trouble alert uh, call in there. Potential. Yeah. Uh, I, not bad for 40 points. I mean, it'd be good and sealed. It would be good, but... Uh, yeah. It, it's good. It, it, it It's good. It's not blowing, you know, not uh, blowing my socks off, but it's it's good for what it does. Not knocking your socks off? Nah, my socks are on point right now, so... Uh, and then the last uh, preview from Lucky Dice Games is Clea. Guys, I would share my screen with you, but that we did that last time, and that's when everything crashed, so... I'm, I'm like a scared. Should we try? <laughs> should we try it one more time or not? Let's, let's go, because Clea's got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. And it's a great sculpt. All right, let's let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, oh yeah, I'm so scared. Why is it red? Good. <laughs> you see it? Yeah, I got you. It's a uh, bomb sculpt. So. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's basically First, like it's like your generic Doctor Strange sculpt, right? Kind of like. Yeah. But with super fancy hair. Yeah. So the first trait we got, Orb of Agamotto. Uh, when Clea attacks, opposing characters can't use shape change. So right out the box, you're cutting through people's shape change. That's great. Especially with how, how much shape change there is in the game now. Right. So that's great. Uh, for love and knowledge, when a friendly character... Now this one's... I think this one's awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. When a friendly character named Loki is within four squares and line of fire, both characters can use precision strike and deal two penetrating damage instead of one using the Mystic's team ability. Right. Damn. That's pretty good. That is. That's a <clears throat> trait. That's. And we know Loki. There's super Loki in the set, right? So. So you know, and she's only a hundred <clears throat> points too. So that right there is already. That's a great trait. Uh, she does have a um, a special defense power. It's on the last three clicks of her de- uh, her dial. Uh, surprising betrayal. Defend. If a friendly character is hit while replacing its defense value with Clea's, damage dealt by that attack becomes unavoidable, and after resolutions, heal Clea equal to half the damage dealt. I mean, so you're hitting somebody... It becomes unavoidable damage if they're using her defend, and then she gets to heal half of uh, the result. So, so you're like sacrificing, uh, you know, your your teammate. Hence yeah, the surprise they're getting betrayal. Hit, you're healing her up. So, not again, bad. I think she's a little high up there in in uh, point value for what you get personally. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, she's got to <laughs> uh, improve targeting, hindering terrain. So she can bust through that. She's got an eight range with two targets, which is not bad. Flying, uh, no indomitable, um, no defense uh, reducers, no. So she starts with uh, ESD. She got a three damage with outwit. She's got precision. Oh, not precision strike. She has pen blast, and she got phasing. That top dial phasing is one that I always think sucks because then she jumps right over into running shot. Yeah. And it's so easy to knock her right past running shot. I think, like, her sweet spot is really actually her surprise betrayal click. Because she's got energy explosion, two targets, 10 attack. But she's got the 18 defense with prob also with the defend. So, yeah. But, I mean, you got to get knocked onto that, which is kind of bad. Yeah, it, she's almost worth pushing 
just to try and get her to the running shot pen blast with the outwit. Yeah, but you lose you lose stats then. You know, you're going from eleven to ten, you know, from eighteen to seventeen. Well, she still have deflection, which is fine, but yeah. Yeah, I can. I, I mean, I can, definitely you play. You could play it in sealed. I think, like you know, that's pretty good. But. Yeah, yeah, sealed. She she'll be good in sealed. And I I'm, I already can hear people. Well, you know, you can just give her, you know, exo specs, or you can just give her the. Yeah, well, I get that. Like, you know, you can do that to anyone. <laughs> this right here. Oh, Green Goblin, you sexy mother. Oh, Green yeah. Goblin. <laughs> So, yep. Uh, this is, we're not going to go into every single figure like like we did last week. And no. We just kind of touch on the ones we, we really like. Um, but this guy is pretty important. Uh, if nothing else, he's got his signature equipment, the Goblin Glider, which we'll, we'll kind of talk about. It was all the rage on the Facebooks this week. Goblin Glider. Goblin Glider is where it's at. Yeah. Uh, so Green Goblin's uh, two point values, fifteen seventy five. Uh, as you can see on the screen, he's got Genius or Madness trait. If Green Goblin's dial displays Outwit, friendly characters with Sinister Syndicate keyword have Protected Outwit. If his dial displays Perplex, they have Protected Perplex. Um, he and it says like he couldn't perplex himself. So I I like these new little like kind of clarifications. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Is like he's Sinister Syndicate, so he's got protective perplex. So it's yep. like it, it's clarifying it for you right there on the card. So that's nice. Uh, he does have a stop click with region on it, and on his stop click, he it's his last click of his dial. Uh, he's got impaled by the remote control glider, uh, free KO goblin glider equipment equipped to green goblin. If you do modify attack plus three and make a ranged attack target a single opposing character that deals three penetrating damage. Instead of normal damage, if he misses, KO Green Goblin. Amazing. Yeah, that's pretty this, cool. This is probably <clears throat> the best Green Goblin we have ever seen. Yeah. In my opinion. Especially with the with the, with the, uh, the Goblin uh, Glider, which yeah. grants uh, flight, and it grants running shot, and if that character can already use running shot, they can use hypersonic speed it. instead. There, there it is. is. Boom. Eight yeah. points. Eight uh, points. Equip any. Unequip. Drop. When equip. Yeah. Character equipped by a subject. Can use this effect. Um, it's not indestructible. No. So, I mean, very so. easily for someone to scoop it up and just chuck it at you and break it. I get that. Ooh. The old butt pod. Well, the old butt pod we talked about earlier. Flight, toughness, speed plus two. Uh, like I said before, I it said ain't it. bad. That ain't bad. You got somebody who needs to fly. I'm, your flash type figures. Yeah, I was gonna say you toss it on any flash figure. That flash figure just now became a hundred percent better. Yep. Instantly okay. for eight points, especially with the plus two speed too. And a lot of these flashes don't have toughness. They have like super senses. So now you got toughness, super senses, a plus two, and flight for eight points. Like, yeah. So here's a here's another Magia Montana. 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 Not, not, Montana. Not, nothing. Nope. Nothing to write home about really. Mr. Negative. This one was cool. It's cool. Uh, another Magia Empower Exploit Support. Um, mm-hmm. It's pretty cool how they play on the black and white stuff. If you look at his dial here. Mm-hmm. Just knocking off a hush. It's yep. fine. Oh gosh, this guy! Oh, that, that sculpt right there just makes me so. It just makes me nervous of how many of those are going to show up broken. broken. Just I, how many of those are going to show up broken? I think if they're broken, they'll be like straight snapped off the base, though, not like a pretty clean break. Yeah, it like, won't be a shatter. Yeah, but still, <clears throat> just look at it, and you're like, oh. I'm. Oh, you know what? Let, can we talk about for a minute? Like before we move forward, I'm a little. I'm a little. Uh, you're talking about being disappointed. Oh, what a, what about go. what about the uh, the goblin glider freaking not even being attached on the out of the booster? Try to find the picture. When uh, Scott Porter opened it up, his goblin glider, the actual glider part was missing. What? That's, 
Yeah, it's like, how are you going to have an unboxing? Like, uh, see how, like, in the picture here, Goblin has his glider? Yeah, yeah. But the actual object, it was missing. It was just a little, like, uh, like clear thing coming up off the ground and no glider on top. Oh, actually, man. I don't think I actually took a picture. And then, like, his Medusa was broken. Oh, God. It's like, it's like how are you going to, you know, do previews, you know, it unboxing? Just, you're going to do Scott dirty with yeah. broken stuff. Well, like, again. like if, Scott, if Scott's getting the broken stuff, man, what hope what, do we have? <laughs> I've heard people who are like, oh, they've got to, like, you know, they got to, like, special put his boosters together and this and that. Obviously, they're not. If yeah, he gets stuff not. that's broken or things like that, then obviously – they're not setting aside special boosters for him. Now, I'm convinced there is a way to know which bricks have, like, ultra chases in, in them and not, and which ones don't. I'm convinced. I, I think that they do. Well, they had, what was it, the uh, the Deadpool set. He didn't pull a chase, and they sent him chases on purpose. Sure, yeah. Preview some. So, I mean, I get it. He's going to get some stuff to, like, he's going to get those one or two. I mean, he had Sheriff Strange for the last one. That that's yeah. not on you know on accident. Yeah. Uh, Hydra Falcon. These Hydra characters are cool, but nothing like. Again, they're not groundbreaking, but they're yeah. cool to to have with yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you, did, can you think of off the top of your head any like um, big ones from the last two days of unboxing? Uh, no. All all the rage was um, the it old like chase. Oh. Army. Yeah, yeah, the Ultra Chase. Ultra Chase. Uh, people were talking about the Beetle Pod object. People were talking about the um, the Goblin Glider. Mm-hmm. I'm going back through our page right now. I am. Uh, too. There's a Goblin Glider. Uh, oh, the title, uh, title, um, Captain America. Oh, title cap. It's really good. Oh, Beetle. Uh, here's Beetle. Beetle's got stealth, perplex. So really quick, the Beetle on a Sinister Syndicate theme, uh, theme team. He's a flyer. Or he will have flight because of his object. Beetle pod. Yeah, so that can be relevant because of this, nah. that little That's... booty there. Yep. And then uh, the Ultra Chase. Yeah, do you want to do Captain America first, real quick? Uh, yeah, sure. You you got it pulled up or no? I have I have what is um. What what is who who had it? Eternal Games. Uh, I'm not sure to be honest with you. But I got him. I got him pulled up right here. I got him. Um, so, title character. He's got new wording, and this was, uh, or new slash old wording, I guess I should say. So, uh, at the end of your turn, if title character uh, activated a plot ability and didn't attack an opposing character, deal it one <coughs> avoidable damage. Oh yes, yes, yes. This was the original wording. They changed the wording. People abused it on the penguin. And now they're back to the old wording. I'm not 100% sure. There you go. If they're going to do this going forward or if this was just done uh, on purpose for this uh, set, not sure. But, I mean, he's 80 points. He His stats are amazing. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's just stupid good, this here. Yeah, that. we'll get to that. But just let's get to his plot abilities. He starts with one plot point. Uh, when Captain America Resilient is KO'd, choose an opponent uh, once per turn for the rest of the game. That opponent may f- uh, force you to re-roll an attack roll. So basically, give you're going to get prop. a prop. Yeah. Uh, plus one. So you're giving him a plot point. Um, you know what's interesting, though? Skills. It's not really prob. Because no. it's the player that's making you re-roll. It's not a exactly. character. So that's the first real interaction where it's the player, you know, like the opponent something... himself is making you re-roll the attack roll. Yeah, yeah. So not cool. any player or anything like that. Yeah. So basically, me as a player, I get probability control mm-hmm. whenever I want on my turn or your turn. Yeah, or actually on your turn. Uh, so his first plot ability, he gets plus one, free, move up to one square, then make a close attack. So right off the right off the get go, he starts with running shot. So if you running shot him up, and you get him close enough, 
he can go ahead and make an attack. You then give him a plot point. He can then move one square and make a close attack. Right. <clears throat> he's an alpha strike. He, he, he's amazing for an alpha strike team. Yep. yep. Plus one. Free until your next turn. Friendly characters modify defense by plus two when targeted by mind control. So, right there. He's fighting against your mind control teams, your cosmic teams with uh, Starro, uh, the Skull from this set, I believe, yeah, is a yeah. big mind control threat as well. Um, so right there, you give him a plus one uh, plot points, and you're getting a plus two for that. Mm. He gets another one, plus one, free. Move each other friendly character one square. So you're kind of giving your entire team like uh, a pseudo sidestep almost. Yeah, yeah. And then his last one, if you if you take away three plot points, it's called I'm sorry I failed you, but the war ends now. Power. Place Captain America resilient into a square that is adjacent to both an opposing character and a square of hindering or blocking terrain. Then make a close attack. If Captain America resilient KOs an opposing character with that attack, give him three plot points. So, so right there, he goes in, <clears throat> blows up, makes an attack. If he KOs the guy, he gets his three plot points right back. Yeah. yeah. There's there's no downside to any of his plot abilities. So, Steve... Oh, I got the echo back. So, Steve DiCarlo pointed out if that he themes with the uh, Starter Hulk from Mighty Thor. Mm -hmm. So, you just plus one, move each friendly character uh, one square. He doesn't have to be adjacent. For so, what? The, the uh, move friendly character? Yeah. No, so, it just says all friendly characters get to move one square. So you play this guy, you play like three Hulks. That's 230. You can play actually four Hulks. Just <laughs> send them out, leap climb, and then plus one, and they just start hammering on dudes. They just start quaking everything? I mean, you, you could, realistically. I mean, you could... So like when this comes out, obviously post-rotation, probably, over, you know, obviously overdrive is not a thing, but like you could do like... Uh, you know, overdrive three hulks on this guy and still have points left over for like a prob. That's Yeesh. <laughs> so you Yeesh. just like go and and you know, you just go all the way across the map, you know, or as however far overdrive goes, and you know, you just start smashing stuff with starter hulks like. Disaster. You're just quaking stuff everywhere. You're just smashing things to pieces. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be fun. I'm telling you, we're we are in an age of hero clicks that is very diverse. Yeah. So we got this guy, and then we might as well get to it. I think this is the last one. I think worth this is the last about. big one. They had a Venom Iron Man. Uh, yeah, but again, it's nothing special. Just the same. The vent, the symbiote trait, right? Yeah, and it's just an it's an Iron Man dial. Yeah, yeah, plasticity, shape change, automatically breaks away, improved tar. It's a, it's a it it's a it's an Iron Man. Mm -hmm. So this guy, Captain Marvel, is the Ultra Chase. Um, you can see they've got like blue tab, so new new color for the tab. Uh, he's got two traits. Uh, he's got to need three, uh, three years to fully return. Uh, once per game, when Captain Marvel would be KO'd, instead give him three resurrection tokens and place him on this card. At the beginning of your turn, if Captain Marvel is on this card, remove, remove her resurrection token. When the last one is removed, place Captain Marvel in any square along the edge of the map on click number three and protect the pulse wave. So you got to KO him twice, basically. Yep. Uh, and then he's got another trait. I'm coming back to save everyone when Captain Marvel is placed on the map by use of I need three years to fully return. All standard characters that were on the starting force that have been KO'd this game are placed on the map on their starting clip this game and given a spirit token. Friendly characters are placed along the same edge of the map Captain Marvel is and opposing characters on the opposite edge. Until your next turn, Characters places where you can't attack or be attacked. This game 
Characters with spirit tokens can't be replaced, can't generate bystanders, and aren't scored. This game, when a character with a spirit token takes damage, remove it from the game immediately. Wow, that's a mouthful. It's a so, lot. So, it's pretty cool. I mean, you get all your friendly characters you place on, you know, on the one side, your opponent, opposing characters place on the other side of the map. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, but your characters obviously can't do jack this that round. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's gimmicky. I mean, could it potentially uh, lead to something? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those fringe figures that maybe it makes a bigger splash after rotation. You mm-hmm. play it now, the shredders are going to eat it. Yeah. That's just, that's, that's just a given. Yeah. Shredders eat it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the combat values on it aren't the greatest. I think it's got like a uh, a ten attack, a lot of improved targeting and stuff. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's one of those uh very gimmicky figures. Um, yeah, could be it's a lot f- of fun to play. It's all phasing, right? It's all phasing. Yeah. He's got three clicks of pulse wave, three clicks of side blast, three clicks of uh, senses, three clicks of deflection. He's got prob on every click. I mean, it, it doesn't have move and attack on his own. I don't know. Like, it would be really hard to optimize, I guess, you know, if you if that's what you're really wanting to play. That'd be really, really tough. Yeah, I mean, if you really, if you're trying to make it competitive, you're already thinking, all right, I got to give it a glider or an exo specs or something mm-hmm. just to give it move and attack, to give it a little more this or that. I need to put some perplex with it as well. To kind of buff some stats. I mean, you're already now over investing in it just to be able to to make it competitive. All right. Well, Jose De Leon has a question about him. Did you read this one? I did. Yeah, I read it. So, can you analyze and give us uh, the your prediction on what happens when the Ultra Chase meets Pulse Wave, specifically? What do you think would happen when it comes back after three turns and the characters it brings back at Pulse Wave since his second trait isn't protected Pulse Wave? Thanks in advance. Then he goes on to further clarify if he is caught up in a Pulse Wave and the characters uh, he brought back are two, do they go away? If they're killed by a Pulse Wave, are are they scored? No. Uh, I mean, I get what you're saying. Okay, and like... For just exactly how it's worded, it pr- you're probably right in what you're assuming. But I have no doubt that if WizKids has to make a ruling on it, they're going to go with intent. Yep. And the, you know, they're going to be like, uh, yeah, we messed up, so that's not how it works. Yeah. Basically what it boils down to is that this figure is meant to bring back characters uh for you to play with and as soon as they take damage they just leave the map i don't think uh they're i don't think you're going to be able to pulse wave them and get points off of it now we've been completely wrong on other things before too and the way they interact and work and we've looked at it and said oh yeah it's going to work this way and we've come back and it's like no so it's so if i had to look at it and say this is what i think is going to happen it's going to be if you pulse wave them they just leave the map yeah, there's a reason we're not rules guys, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's um, a reason why I just do live videos. <laughs> just, yeah, just stay in my lane. Yeah, Zach Strong writes in. He says, "If there was a clicks episode, of Jerry Springer, what's it about, and who's in a love triangle?" This is a, was Zach. Zach's a cool guy. Zach's in the Pacific Northwest, up in Washington, I believe. Uh, he's a really cool guy. I chat with him every once in a while. Um. I so, Clicks either. episode of Jerry Springer. What's it about, and who's in the love triangle? I mean, so like, it, or, I don't know. You're trying to get me in trouble here, Zach. Why does it got to be a love triangle? Right. Like, so, like, it, it, think about couples in Hero Clicks, right? So, there's like, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's still a couple. I'm assuming so. Uh, Nick and Patricia, right? Um, there's Dan and Sam. Amber and Jason. Amber and Jason. Uh, so who who would be in a love? Or I guess you could just do women or like couple. It's not have to be couples in hero clicks. I guess it could just be like women or men. I mean, I don't know. I mean, 
it could just yeah. I mean, it could be like, you know, Lane's cheating on Clickstaff with, with like you know Team Juggernaut, or with uh, Phoenix Nest. It could be like a a weird like team love triangle. Yeah. Yeah, it could yeah. be anything. Like, who the hell knows? I don't even know what he means by this. Like, so, so some somebody like from Phoenix Nest is like stealing all of the Phoenix Nest like tech or whatever, and he's like messaging it out to like Team Majestics. Like, oh. <laughs> well, we know it's not Matty G because he can't even build his own stuff. Oh snap! So, <laughs> so Matty G is not shots fired. It's not him. Shots fired. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's that's like a really weird question. That's a weird I, one. Also, like uh, Jerry Springer hasn't been on the air for like how many years that I'm aware of. I don't know. Jerry Springer's still on the air. It's actually no filmed, way. It's filmed in Connecticut. Oh, oh that makes it's sense. filmed out in like Western Connecticut. It's crazy. That makes sense. <laughs> wasn't right. Chris? Wasn't Chris Hansen arrested out there uh, like yesterday as well? What? He was, yeah, he was. Chris Hansen was arrested. Yeah, to catch a predator, dude. For what? Uh, like not paying a bill or something. I don't know. Oh, for tax evasion. I'm like, tell me, <clears throat> tell me, it was because he was caught with an underage he, person. He, he was like ro- writing like fraudulent checks or something like that. Oh man, he's out there bouncing checks. Yeah, he he bounced he bounced the check to pay his bail or something like that. What an ass. <laughs> anyway, what an ass Chris Hansen. Uh. Brian Poling writes in, was a piece retiring in June you will miss the most in competitive play? What piece will make you happy not to see any more in competitive play? Shredders. Uh, shredders. Eh, I don't mind playing Shredders, honestly. I just want them to I just I want them to go away. I want to see if Michael Love can actually play something besides Shredders. <laughs> see if he can actually play Hero Clicks. I just yeah, I need like, just think about winning teams and how many times there's been a shredder on them. I mean, even Tyler Spees, his his winning team was very unique in the sense that he played the Giganto and Namors, but still had Mini Shredder on it. So there was still a Shredder on it. Yeah. Well. So I'll be know. happy when Shredders are gone. I, I'm not, I, you know, I don't really like to speculate uh, too much as far as rotation because, I mean, it's January. It's January, Brian Poling. I feel like you ask this every year too. Like I really feel like everybody that. asks. It's, that's the one thing they want to know because it's. It'll be. Right it'll be now, like. It'll be like. Aug- it'll be like August, and they'll be like, "Oh, wh- what retires next year?" And then, you know, it's like, "Well, we just retired like yesterday, but uh, all right, you know." <laughs> well, that's because they'll hear what the the cutoff is, all and right. then everyone will have the countdown to when Unimind or whatever it is is gone. Okay, so now next year we're definitely getting rid of this. Yeah. So I think it's that whole like anticipation. I mean, honestly, these questions, in my opinion, are good because people are still excited to see how the landscape is going to fall after a rotation. I'm going to miss Haha Joker. I'm definitely going to miss Haha. Yeah, I'll miss Haha. Um, overdrive. I got, over. I, I actually, that's a piece I I don't like playing against is overdrive. I feel like it's just way too much movement. Especially because like it's always coupled with Sam Cap, right? That's so, like, why the plus yeah. three, the plus three, and then the and then the ID card calling right after. Mm-hmm. It's just like oof, yeah. as Micah would say, oof, oof. Uh, what else did we have? We I think we had a few more questions. I'm I'm going to the the shared page. Yeah. So uh, Jeff Farrow writes in. He says, "When can we expect Jeff Farrow to be a guest?" LOL. JK. But seriously, okay. Real question, are symbiotes venomized characters, the new zombies? We are lousy with them and they and we are lousy with them and they all do a lot for their points. We are lousy with that, them. I don't even know what that means. Well you just so, won well, something, so you can't be that lousy. Yeah. <laughs> so like like the zombie chases were pretty good, I thought, but Ah, there were some that were good, there were some that were cheeks. I was gonna say Jeff can come on when he wins something, but damn he it. just did. So I mean, oh, technically, uh, Brian Singh. Will he be set? sober though? That's the question. Sober Jeff? Arrow. I don't. I don't care. Probably maybe. not. Brandon. Brandon used to do the show drunk every once in a while, <laughs> back in the day when we were when that was my own boy. Uh, Brian Sinkoff says he's waiting for an invite. Well, bro, I mean, 
uh, Brian Sinkoff does the Sink and Sun unboxings, right? I think yeah. that's what, so. I mean, you do unboxings. That's cool. Like, <laughs> I, 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 this has no way. Well, I mean, what are we gonna talk about? Do you want to talk about something specific? We could talk about something specific, but I'm not gonna just invite you on the show to be like, "Oh, this dude does unboxings." Okay, I I I plugged your channel. You do unboxings. There you go. <laughs> That's really the point, right? Like like when movie stars go on shows, they go on to talk about the movie they got coming up, right? So I plug I plug your YouTube channel, Sink and Sun Unboxings. There you go. John Drapp says, what figure do you want to bring out of retirement? Let's say Faust. Let's bring Faust back. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. I would, I would say Resurrection Man. Really? I liked Resurrection Man. I pl- no, I played him. That's just an odd choice, I think. It's DC. You know, I, I can try and try to bring back as much DC as I can. Um, yeah. Um, Clarion. I like Clarion. Clarion was good. I like Clarion a lot. Maybe as maybe Swamp Thing with the Swamp Thing ID card. Hey, that's uh, I'm gonna be sour about that forever. Joe Greco says, with more equipment still to come in future sets, what would be the new Mjolnir? Mjolnir. Mjolnir. The meow meow. Yeah, what's the new one? I mean, the new one right now is like either Exo Specs or uh, what's it, what's its face? The Goblin Glider. But the I Goblin mean, there's Glider. a lot we haven't seen, you know. Yeah, there's still a lot we haven't seen in the new set. Um, I mean, I still think that people are are sleeping on some of the uh the objects from uh Batman the Animated Series. Man, I played uh, the. The Christmas present. Christmas, Christmas present, present was yeah. good for me. That's cool. Um, the bat- battering's not bad either. Uh, especially with the new errata to it. Battering is, is legit. Pump battering, that up a little bit. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, the Scarface doll is pretty Scarface. good. Scarface? Yeah. The Venom, Venom pump was good. I Venom think harness is fantastic. I think that's yeah. a fantastic piece of equipment. But I don't know. Uh, I think it's all up in the air right now. It all depends on your play style. It all depends on what you're going to field. I yeah. mean, right now the field's wide open. Exo Specs is the easy choice. Everyone just wants to just plop it on someone and just pick whatever they want. And I get that. That's fine. I know. Like, somebody said, like, oh, this will uh, – somebody com- – when you comment, this will be really good with Exo Specs. It's like – Anything yes. is good with Exo Specs. It's like, yes, ev- everything is good with Exo Specs. Everything. Like, like, maybe, maybe not optimal, but good. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you mean I get to pick anything in my speed or my attack value or my attack? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. course, it's going to be good. <laughs> oh, okay. But this is also why you're going to probably see an upswing in Darwin. Yeah. Hey, uh, Darwin, I, I don't know why people don't play Darwin. I can tell you, Kenny Pena loves Darwin. That's his piece. Kenny's, that, Kenny's also, high all, all, Darwin. all season of fantasy football is like, are you, when are you guys playing Darwin? Tell you why does nobody play Darwin? You know, like geez. I think, I think it might have been the Big Bang qualifier. I think every person fielded an Exo Specs, or it was on some sort every, of pickup power. It was. I think it was on every, every. It was yeah. It was either everyone had a pickup power or everyone in the top eight had an Exo Specs. Because because like Sam Sam was like Unimind Lockjaw, which right? is two pickup powers. Yeah, and then Lockjaw dies if he rolls a six, right? So, I mean that's. That's a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember what else. I remember I remember looking at the teams and be like, okay, so a couple of those are pretty good, and then like the, a couple of them are not. <laughs> so, but I mean, I'm not not being judgmental, but just I don't mean not good, but I mean like not especially unique or new. I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I got you. Um, guys, I gotta scroll way down. Okay, here we go. Uh, so Sam, uh, who we got? Oh, this is Jeff. Jeff's team. Oh, Jeff's team's Captain Kirk. Blah blah blah. Do you know the it format? was an Alpha Alpha Strike team? It was just three hundred modern, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Alpha Strike team. Um, Unimine. Full points. 
Uh, this is not the the Big Bang. This is uh, Doc's Rock or whatever. Yeah, you want me to uh, look that up real fast? Yeah, there was Shredder, a Shredder team with Mudman, Surger. I mean, adding Surger Shredders is kind of new, I guess. But uh, Green Arrow, Anarchy, Joker, Penguin, Penguin, IDs, uh, Micah. Jeez, Micah. Let me guess. He played uh, Shredders. Shredders. Yeah, that handwriting. Jeez, atrocious. I can say that because Micah, Micah's a cool guy. Uh, let's see, Matt got... Donham, um, Alec, Alex Wilder, that's cool. Sheriff Strange, that's cool. Zatana. Another pick of power, though. Lord, Lord, yeah, Lord Chaos, Master Order, uh, that's cool. No, you don't pick a power. Your opponent chooses. Yeah, but you still take damage though from Darwin. Really? That's been, that's been, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Tri Sentinel, Start Car. Which is weird. I don't understand <clears throat> that. Because technically you're not picking a power, but whatever. Yeah. Green Arrow, Anarchy, Batgirl, Penguin, Penguin, and another Alpha Strike team. Pretty much the same team as Jeff's. Yeah. Okay. So, so the top, not a, top four. Not a lot of pick a power at uh, the Texas event. Yeah, I have the top four sheets here for the Big Bang. Uh, they say Bob and Randy played the same team. Right. So. Uh, they played Star Fox with uh, Mirror of Mirrors. They played the uh, TMT Hulk twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Venom Harness, Exo Specs. Uh, you got a uh, Miss. Pardon? Is it an Avengers team? Um, I'm looking. I'm looking. Star yeah. Fox, Avengers, Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, Avengers. it's an Avengers theme team. Uh, they then played a where'd it go? Uh, Miss Marvel at fifteen points. Giant girl, uh, giant girl, giant girl, giant girl, giant girl. Uh, Professor X ID, Wolverine ID, a Brew ID, Cyclops, Jean Grey. Um, what the hell's the last one? That doesn't matter. I can't. Yeah, so I can't even read what the, the last one is. But two two people played that. And then you had. Where are we at? Dave Gosselman. Mm. I'm trying to pull it up. It's not. There we go. Uh, Mini Shredder. Lockjaw. Haha Joker. Oh, it was like Don't Die. It was Ironheart. 25 points. Groot. The Ha 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 Santa map bonus. Wolverine Bounty. Jean Grey. Cyclops. He also ran Exospecs as well. And then Sam. She ran Unimine with three forged in blue, Lockjaw, two suited henchmen, a Groot, the Invisible Plane, uh, Wolverine, ID. Yeah, it doesn't matter. IDs. A symbiote. Know. So every team had a pick of power on it with the extra yeah. specs and everything. Hmm. That's cool. So, I mean. The thing about exo specs is like with Darwin, it, like. It's not this, so our Darwin with exo versus exo specs is this like it doesn't matter because you don't have to choose with exo specs, yeah. You know what I mean, or, or even equip them. I mean, you probably still want to equip them, and it's like you can kill Darwin at some point, but like with the Unimines and Lockjaws, like a big part of what makes them good is picking the power, and so like the chance to just score 75 points on Lockjaw. Or like you know, make you to mind you know a little bit worse. Although you can knock them to pulse wave also, so that's a thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Either way. Yeah, I mean, I just yeah, I think Darwin is 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 pretty viable, just for the fact that uh, it, it it makes you have to deal with it. Yeah. So so far from what we've seen from Earth X, what are you looking forward to the most? Uh... What's what's on your buy list? My buy list right Your now list. is definitely the starter. Starter. Just for the maps. Yeah, obviously. And probably the token pack. Just because on the other the side, yeah. uh, yeah. exactly, is the bystanders. Okay. Which is smart. It's That's super smart. Um, yeah. Other than that, I want every single object. Every single object I want. So that means you're buying the characters that go with them, right? Because, I mean... Uh, yeah, most likely. And then trying to, like... Hawk the characters. So what do you think? <laughs> so what do you think Green Goblin's gonna cost? 
40 bucks, 30 bucks. No, 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 that. no. I don't see that's the thing is he's a super rare. Like it was different with uh, the Mighty Thor. A lot of the good, the good objects were with chases, which sucked, which was horrible. And then after you saw like the dust settle, even those good objects that were on like super rares and stuff, they settled down to be like six dollars, eight dollars, things like that. You know what I mean? What's yeah. up? I get a phone call. It's fine. <laughs> like so, we're, like we're almost done. So it's fine. Like the you know the enchanted crowbar, it settled back down. It was like six dollars, eight but eight dollars, things like that. Yeah. So I mean, it was it was the same thing with the venom harness. That thing was was jacked up when it first came out, and then finally the dust settled and it settled down. So I think right yeah, out but, the gate. But I think like, you're discounting the fact that Green Goblin is a popular character. Yes. So, so you, think, you, you have to also take that into consideration. And while Enchanted Crowbar is cool and, and pretty good, and Venom Harness is cool and pretty good, people love running shot. Like they want the oh, running God, shot, they absolutely. want the hypersonic. So I think I think those things combined will make it pretty good. And then we don't know like how short print this set's going to be, I imagine it's going to sell out pretty quickly. Like, Betas, you can still go get. I just bought a brick yesterday for, like, 60 bucks. We still got to crack that open, too. We still got to crack that open. We still got to crack that open. Yeah. <laughs> spoiler uh, alert. There's going to be an unboxing. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would say $40 for it isn't unreasonable. Right. It's not it's bad. unreasonable. I would pay forty dollars for it. Yeah. It's on Just the upper end of green arrow on it. It's on the upper end of what I would prefer to pay for a figure. You know what I mean? Yes. But but yeah, I could see it. I'm just gonna I'm... pull it, so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh anything else we want to talk about before we wrap it up? Uh I mean no. I mean like I said, uh I'm just super stoked where um where everything is right now with the arrow clicks. We're seeing some really good previews. Uh, I'm super happy that um, the winner maps are being sold in the quantities that they are. Uh, it means that, you know, the pairing with WizKids was a great idea. Uh, I'm just super excited to see where we're going. Yeah, me too. Uh, if you're in and around uh, Fresno, California, January 26th, I'll be town, middle map. Uh, 300 modern age limited. Uh, Rock Underground's banned because that map's booty. Uh, butt cheeks. Uh, but yeah, come out, have some fun. Um, look forward to more previews. I'm sure we'll get some more this week from another store. Um, thanks to my dude, Aries. Absolutely, man. Thank you for. I mean, again, I I say it every time. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you gotta for, stop. You gotta stop. You gotta I appreciate stop. it, man. Also, January 26th, if you're on the East Coast, uh, hop out to uh, Double Midnight Games in New Hampshire. They are running also a win, win a map. Uh, I'm going to be trying to get out there, and I'm going to try and drag some Pusheen boys with me. Yeah. 300 points modern. Oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to dust, dust that Worlds team off and see if I can't give it another go. All right. Well, good luck, my man. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this YouTube stuff works out and you'll be seeing more of these ugly mugs and uh until next time remember the real fun begins when you're two clicks from KO.